I have a lot of parents ask me, should I put my daughter in gymnastics? And I say no, because I know 20, 30 years time, there's still gonna be those coaches that still hurt kids like me when I was nine. To watch gymnastics is to see an optical illusion. As graceful as it looks, the reality is that it's one of the more brutal sports. And unlike most elite sports, it's often children, not adults, who have to endure injury and pain as they train up to 35 hours a week to achieve excellence. What do you want to do with these? Um, can you just put them away? Trinity de Lancé was one of the best junior gymnasts in Victoria, but that all ended last year when she was just 12. Sydney Club. Campbell. A coach at her prestigious club asked her to do an exercise called a backwards walkover. It's like a handstand, but you go over into a bridge and you come back up again. And so I went over and I did five, and then I went over again, and she said, no, do them again. And I went, OK. So I went over and did them again. She said, no, not good enough, and like told me to do like 15 more at the point where my back was starting to really hurt. And we got to a point where I was just like on the floor crying because it hurts so much. I picked up Trinity from Jim and she could hardly walk. So I had to help carry her under her armpits get, to get her into the car and take her straight to the doctor. So this is the very top. The, the doctor said Trinity had vertebrae. broken her back in two places. Yeah. These are the broken bits off the sides of her vertebrae. She arched her back so much that the bones touched each other. Earlier this year, the Australian Human Rights Commission finished an investigation into gymnastics after decades of complaints. It found the sport had systemic high risks for physical and psychological abuse of children. That create an environment where athlete safety and wellbeing are not prioritised and consequently where abuse and mistreatment can thrive. These claims of abuse aren't just historic, they're allegedly still occurring. And so for transparency reasons, Gymnastics Australia said that while the human rights investigation was underway, all complaints would go to a new body that was set up by the federal government last year. It's called Sport Integrity Australia. We thought maybe this one time we would be believed. Sport Integrity Australia's job, in part, is to act as an independent body to hear complaints, instead of sports investigating themselves. Gymnasts and their families were given four months last year to make complaints. Over that time, it received 35 complaints and investigated seven. Of those, four came back without a conclusive finding. Now, those families, all of elite junior gymnasts in Victoria, are speaking out. They say their complaints weren't properly heard. The families' cases have been taken up by a new advocacy body, Athlete Rights Australia, which was formed recently by three former elite gymnasts who all claim they were abused as children in the sport. There seems to be instances where key evidence wasn't considered, key witnesses weren't interviewed. The families feel as though the process wasn't thorough enough. Scarlett Magnanini is a former state Victorian gymnast. She's 15 now, but her gymnastics career ended when she was just 12. It was like a, you know, sort of verbal and psychological abuse that that's not OK. And I was, I was so young. She alleges her coach frequently subjected her to psychological abuse, but one time in particular stands out. There's six of us sitting in the room. She shuts the door behind us. She is yelling hysterical. She was saying things like, oh, you know, no one would care if you've left. It would do everyone a favour if you were gone. Like, you're a worthless gymnast, a worthless person. I felt broken. I, I, I started to believe the things she was saying about me. The family complained to Sport Integrity Australia, alleging psychological and physical abuse. They cited witnesses who'd seen the coach's alleged bullying behaviour. Scarlett was interviewed for several hours. Only recently they received a letter from Gymnastics Australia with a finding that the allegation was neither substantiated nor unsubstantiated. I was heartbroken. I felt like when that answer came out, my experience wasn't validated. It wasn't accepted. 
and all the, like, the trauma that I'd faced, they basically said, no, it didn't happen. 7.30 asked Sport Integrity Australia to answer various allegations raised in this story, but it declined. In a statement, it defended its impartiality and processes, saying it assesses all evidence and if there isn't evidence to support one version or another, will make a finding of neither substantiated or unsubstantiated. Donna Louise Wilson's daughter, Jamie, was a few years younger than Scarlett, but trained and competed at the same Victorian gym. She says she first became suspicious that something was wrong when Jamie was 10 and her behaviour started to change. There was no verbal communication happening at all, so she'd really shut down in her communication. Over time, her psychological symptoms became worse and Jamie was put into crisis care. It was only when her psychologist started asking questions about gymnastics that her mental health professionals put two and two together. The psychological reports confirmed that the abuse and anxiety was coming from within the gymnastics facility. The family complained to Sport Integrity Australia about Jamie's coach, citing doctor's reports and witnesses to the alleged behaviour. Complaints I'm making are that she was yelling at the children, she was isolating them, she was humiliating them. There was a lot of emotional and psychological nuances in her coaching technique that were abusive. Gymnastics Australia wrote to the family. It said Sport Integrity Australia had found that the allegation that the coach's bullying had led to Jamie's deteriorating mental health was neither substantiated or unsubstantiated. Other complaints were found to be unsubstantiated. I'm quite confounded by those findings. I provided so much evidence that you cannot get unsubstantiated or not substantiated. It was the same finding yet again for Stieve and Trinity de Lance, who complained that Trinity's gymnastics club showed a lack of concern by forcing her to do the multiple walkovers that they said led to her back injury. Either an x-ray is wrong and a doctor is a liar and we are liars, or not. I don't understand how you can have a, a non-result. What we're seeing is a very legalist, legalistic response to these issues. Um, it's very formal and it's very cold. This finding of non-substantiated really doesn't give them any sort of remedy at all. Matt Graham is an Australian lawyer who works in Switzerland for the Global Umbrella Group for Athlete Unions, World Players. I think that's the, the fundamental problem here. We, we need to have processes which actually have empathy embedded at their, their heart. Sport Integrity Australia said in its statement that it appreciates not everyone will be satisfied with an outcome. It said, all we can do is apply the processes fairly and make determinations based on the evidence. Sport Integrity Australia has introduced a national integrity framework designed to change... The gym complaints are being seen as a test case for Sport Integrity Australia, as increasingly it will take on the role as independent judge for sports. Most recently, Football Australia signed up to its national framework. In February, it will release its report into gymnastics at the Western Australian Institute of Sport. And last week, 7.30 revealed its investigating allegations by swimmer Maddie Groves against one of her former coaches. The sporting world will be watching the cases closely. For now, though, Trinity de Lancet has just one hope. I want those people to know what they did to me. I want them to say they're sorry. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 730's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.